Good afternoon, church, and good afternoon, church online. We're so glad you're here. Um, this is the day the Lord has made, and we'll be glad in it. And so I'm so thankful that uh, I'm able to be part of this Honor Effects series. Uh, Pastor Chris spoke on honor people, um, honoring people, and Pastor Arnold spoke on honoring parents and children. Um, before I talk about this uh, uh, sermon, I would like to share sad, some sad news. Uh, Sophie's uh, mother uh, passed away uh, this weekend. The funeral service will be here in, on Wednesday from 11 a.m. on. Um, and also, Brother Wayne uh, Tolbert lost his brother-in-law, and uh, also it was this uh, week that he passed away. Um, please pray for them to be comforted. And the good thing about that is both uh, our mother as well as our brother knows the Lord, and so that's our uh, encouraging part. Um, also, Mother uh, Shirley Bell uh, is sick and she's in UC Hospital. Pray for her as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day. Lord, it's your will that you take your children home. We don't complain about it, but we're sad because they're not beside us. Lord God, I pray that for those of us who are brokenhearted, may you comfort us in this time. I ask that your word will be um, revealed and uh, being inspiring. And Lord, I pray that I would deliver it in the boundaries you've set for me. May they um, those who hear your word, let their mind and heart be open to receive your word. We're so grateful. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Before um, speaking about honoring God, I would like to speak a little bit about dishonoring God. Dishonoring God, which means the honor which should be given to the Lord is not given, and that's called sin. And when you do not have a spirit of honor, that affects you. It doesn't affect God. It affects us, our life. So Romans 1, 21 says, For although they knew God, and these people knew about God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So here, this scripture is telling us about people of God who knows about God, but didn't honor God as they should. The word glorified him means it's equivalent that as honoring God. Uh, in, uh, in our language, in my language, native language, mother language, glory and honor are the same word. It's called kibir. And so uh, we use it the same way. <clears throat> and here we see that when we don't give honor to God, there is something which would happen. Our moral fabric will uh, disintegrate um, because the moral fabric comes from the word of God uh, and also God is the moral giver of uh, for us. In this uh, verse, there are three points I would like to indicate. One, not honoring God is compared to not giving thanks. Thank is the expressed gratitude for another. 
Honor, thus, is a more comprehensive concept and than gratitude. Nonetheless, they are united here in this verse. Failing to give God thanks often sincerely and regularly reveals that one does not view God as one superior. Secondly, when we fail to honor God, negatively affects one's cognition. One's very thinking becomes futile and dysfunctional. Disobeying God by disorder, dishonoring him leads to systematic deterioration. When we read Romans 1, we will understand chapter 1. And thirdly, not only one's mind, but one's heart and emotions become blurred, confused, and darkened. Once again, something as basic as honor, if absent, harms our rationality and emotions. First Samuel 2.12, Eli's son was scoundrelers. They had no regard for the Lord. God called Eli's sons scoundrels, which means wicked or evil person who does evil things deliberately. 1 Samuel 2.30, same chapter. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I promise that members of your family will minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. Those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me will be disdained. God's verdict towards their action was to disdain them, reject them as unworthy to serve him. Jesus, coming from Galilee to his hometown, in Matthew 13, 57 to 58, it says, And they took offense at him, the Pharisees, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. When he was in Galilee, he was performing miracles, different things. The manifestation of his power was released. But when he came to his hometown, since they didn't honor him as a prophet, he didn't perform the miracles. So our attitude towards him can limit his desire to do the miraculous in our personal life as well as our corporate life. A man one time wanted to visit his farmer friend and he went to see uh, him and while he was going to his home, he saw that his barn and something caught his eyes. And there were 20 shots, and this is a target, which the target was right on the bull's eye. And 20 of them have holes at the bull eyes. And he was amazed about the sharpness of the shooting. And he said, this man has to be a sharp shooter. And I have to ask who this man is. And he went and found his friend and said, the very first thing he said to him is, how come this person gave, made a shot of 20 times and hit the bull eye? And his friend said, oh, it's simple. And the one who shot those shots is me. And he said, where did you learn to shoot so precisely? And he said, oh, my friend, it's easy. What I did is I shot first and then painted the bull eye around them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of us are like the friend. We just look like we are on the target. 
we have learned churchly verbiage. We learn to give Christian smile. It looks like we have hit the bull's eye. We have just learned how to paint well. It's possible to go through the right motions and not live a life on target. Matthew 15, 7 to 9, Jesus says, You hypocrites, hypocrites. It, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. He's talking about Isaiah 25. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus is requiring authenticity, not hypocrisy, in our life. When we examine our life, what and how do we dishonor God? Are we genuine? Are we authentic? Or are we people who have a form of godliness but denied its power? What do we mean to honor God? Pastor Chris and Pastor Arnold gave a definition of honor. You can go and uh, look to the previous weeks. To honor God means first and foremost, that you recognize him as the highest authority in heaven and earth. <clears throat> he is the one who created the big planets, from the big planets to the small, tiny grain of sand. He created them all. His power, his Spirit and force can contain, cannot be contained. He is mighty and he is great. Honoring God also means that we submit to his ways and know that he has good and wonderful plan for our lives. This requires that we walk in obedience with him and trust his ways even when we undergo in bad situations. Lastly, to honor God means to not only respect him for what he does for us, but to love him for who he is in our life. These three things really should be our foundation to honor God. Jesus was invited in uh, one of the Pharisees' home uh, called Simon. And there was an invited guest. She's a woman. And uh, she was really um, crying and with her tears washing Jesus' feet, as well as she wiped his feet with her hair and also poured perfume on his foot and kissed his, his foot. When, he was, when she was doing that, Simon was questioning about Jesus. If Jesus was a prophet as he claims to, he would have known about this woman. She is a sinner. And Jesus heard and understood him. He didn't say it vocally that much, and, but Jesus heard that, understood that, and he asked Simon, uh, or said to Simon, Simon, two people borrowed money from a lender. And one, 500 dinar, the other one, 50 dinar. And they were not able to pay it, and so the, uh, the lender forgave them. And he asked Simon, who do you think would be loved more? The one who would love more? Uh, the one who have been forgiven 500 denarius or 50? And he said, I suppose the one who had the biggest debt forgiven. 
And Jesus said, you have said it correctly. You have judged correctly. And then in Luke 7, 44, 47, it continues, that story continues. And then he turned, Jesus turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she went my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. So Jesus was saying, Jesus is using this story, and it's in the Middle Eastern. This is how you respect a guest in your home. You give him uh, uh, water to wash. You hug him and kiss him uh, as welcoming, and you pour um, oil on him just as a treatment of as a special guest. So he, brought, uh, he said this about this woman and said, See, who do you think has loved more? The one who has been forgiven much. Fundamentally, when we honor someone, three things occur. One, the one receiving the honor receives external recognition. Honor does not remain invisible. This lady was honoring practically by her tears, by her hair, uh, cleaning his foot with her hair and pouring uh, oil on him and perfume on him. Secondly, those who do the honoring view themselves as less worthy than the honoree. I'm referring to God, not human uh, in this case. Thirdly, the honoring evidence motives that are selfless and communicated by humility or admiration of one esteemed to be better. These three things are exhibited when you honor God. Honoring God is daily commitment. The following are ways in which we can give him the honor he deserves every day. One, honoring him by doing his will. Ezra 10, 11 says, now honor the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do his will. Whenever you run from God, you've got to pay for the trip of deserting his will. When you are in God's will, even if you don't like his will, God will pick up the bill. It is the same when your company sends you somewhere and the company will take responsibility of all the bills. But when you take a vacation on your own, you're responsible for the bill. And my advice to all of us is to stay in his will. Secondly, we are to honor God with our bodies. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. We need to honor God with our bodies because it's purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. And scripture tells us that we are the temple of God. And why not we honor him on this body he has given us? Thirdly, we are to honor God with our income. Proverbs 3, 9, 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. There are three kinds of givers. One, flint. The other one, sponge. The third one, a honeycomb. The one with, which is a flint, you need a hammer 
to get something out of it. And if you even hammer it, you're going to get only a spark, not much. The sponge, you have to squeeze it hard to get the water out of it. And the honeycomb will just flow out of it willingly. So when we understand sowing in the kingdom, you do not need a hammer. You don't need to be squeezed. You do it without compulsion, gladly, with joy. Honor is a seed for access, to access. This honoring is a seed to barriers. This honor shuts down what he has for you. Fourthly, we are to honor God by building an altar. Exodus 20, 24 makes an, says, Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Your sheep and goats and your cattle, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. So God is asking us to build an altar where we come before him and pray and worship him and read scripture to get the daily instruction we need for living a holy life and a righteous life. We are to honor God by giving our hearts 100%. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Honoring God begins first and foremost in our hearts. It is a conscious decision we make to put him first and foremost in our lives. When God measures a man, he puts a rope around his heart, not his head. We are to honor God with humility. Proverbs 22.4 says, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its weights are riches and honor and life. There is three things we get by humbling ourselves, by being, having humility. And humility um, gives us riches. It gives us um, honor and life, those three things. The best teacher of humility is Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we think of humility, it's saying like, oh, I can't do this. I, I'm so, you know, putting us uh, ourselves down. But, you know, I, I found a quote which is really, really meaningful. And this man who gave this quote is called Fred Smith. And it says, humility is not denying the power you have. It is realizing that the power comes through you, not from you. So don't just say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. God can use you in any capacity he wants. Philippians 2, 5, 11 says, Who being in very nature, about, it talks about Jesus, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by coming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Christ, when he himself is God, he chose to be human. 
And by doing that, he subjected himself to be condemned in our place. Rather than worshiping him, we spat on him. When I say we, human race. Rather than love, loving him, we injured him. Rather than adore and honor him, we mocked, beat, and crucified him. He willingly assumed the position of dishonor, even to the point of enduring the dishonorable death of hanging naked on a Roman cross for all to see. No one worthy of great honor had ever been treated so dishonorably. And yet, this is dishonor he willingly received. The humiliation of Christ is something he did voluntarily, willingly. The Bible clearly says he made himself nothing, humbled himself. He, by taking the very nature of a servant, being made a human likeness. Yet, this humiliation was not in vain. It had glorious goal and redemptive purpose. His humiliation led to his exaltation. He is exalted. John 5.23 says, Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Church, who else can we honor? Who else could we glorify? The one who had that position and authority and power, he considered that nothing and come down to us. You know, I heard uh, a study when uh, a man or a woman pass away and we disintegrate the weight of all the soil, the dirt, and uh, the remaining bones is about 3.75 pounds. Each of us are about 3.75 pounds. And that 3.75 pounds in a Mercedes-Benz looks grande. Or in a mansion, it looks grande. Or being in the CEO office, it looks grande. But it's a 3.75 pound dirt. So what is to be so proud about? What's that we lower ourselves to honor God in every aspect of our life, be it in physical body, in our spirit, or in our emotions. Shouldn't we recognize him as the Lord of Lords, King of Kings in our life? We are to honor and obey him. Let us surrender our life without limitation, for he is our Lord and Savior who has been humiliated on our behalf. Let us be determined to honor the Lord in all aspects of our life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon, realizing that we're humans and you're God, a God who deserves all the honor and glory. May we be assured how we walked this life before you and not be ashamed when we come to the throne of grace to see you one day or you come to see us. Lord God, I ask that this message will be something we reflect on, meditate on, and think of as we get up from our bed and do our daily activities, that we honor you in every aspect of our life. Lord, I know myself, and I come before you tonight, through this afternoon, asking you, 
So forgive me for the times I have disobeyed you. I have dishonored you. I pray you the same for my brothers and sisters here. May you forgive every one of us here. Lord Jesus, it's our desire to honor you, but we sometimes fail. And let your host, the power of your Holy Spirit help us to live a holy and righteous life throughout our days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.